Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. This video is actually part two of a two-part video explaining why the sea ice is not forming properly uh, this, this year. So I will just go back one slide and show you. Uh, this is Earth Null School. Um, if you Google Earth Null School and set up ocean waves, um, then this is showing ocean wa waves and it's also giving the period of the waves and the direction. So we've got big surf going on here because the winds are high, it's causing high waves. The winds are high because this is a warm area, this is a cold area, that temperature difference over a short period of time is causing a lot of wind action. So there's also high, you know, high waves here. Uh, so 10 meter, seven meter. But this is the sea ice, the dark area. So let's look at the waves around the sea ice and you can see the period seven seconds, three seconds, and the wave height is varying. We got a, a meter, a third of a meter, but the period is, is, is anywhere from about three to seven, seven or eight seconds on this side. Over here with the meter waves, we have a longer period of, uh, there's a short one there near the island, um, Svalbard, four seconds, 11 seconds. Okay, there's higher numbers on this side, and these are about five or so. Okay, so keep those numbers in mind. Why is this important? This is important because that wave action is uh, contributing to breaking up the sea ice extent as it tries to grow out into that area. This is why that curve is going flat on sea ice. I'll just show you a repeat here. So the sea ice is not forming properly. It's way below the norm. So let's go back to, to here we go. So why is that happening? Well, I have to tell you a little bit about waves. Um, so this is uh, what happens when waves enter shallow water. They, they don't see the bottom at all. Um, they start interacting with the bottom when the water depth is about half a wavelength. And then what happens is the waves start slowing down here. So the back part catches up to the front part. So the wave narrows and starts getting higher and higher until it breaks onto the shore. So the wave interacts with the bottom at half a wavelength depth. Okay, so this is the important thing. Um, now, and this is if you just go to Google Images, wave effect on water mixing de depth, you can find all of this stuff. Now, so this is what happens in deep water. You have a wave, you have the wavelength from crest to crest, the waves, the, the, the waters, the waves moving this way. This is a circular motion of in the water as the wave passes by. And you can see that there's mixing of the water down to half a wavelength of depth. So if there's warmer water down here and cooler water up here, so this is the surface, uh, this is sea surface temperatures measuring the temperature of this. This is radiating out to space, so cooling, but because of this wave action, mixing all the water, the heat is being transferred from here to the surface. So the sea ice that comes along is being melted off. So let's have a look um, back here. Um, this is just to reiterate the period of the wave is it doesn't give the uh, wave speed here. It doesn't give the depth that these waves are interacting with, but we know their uh, mixing is down to about half a wavelength. So let's have a look. Um, first of all, these periods, you know, five to seven seconds, uh, to, you know, 10, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. These are ordinary gravity waves on the water. So now the wave period was say roughly five seconds. So that's the wave period. And if you follow the curve up, that's having the wavelength of that wave will be about say 70 meters, 50 to 70 meters. So that will cause mixing of the water down to about 25 to 35 meters, say. 
Now on, a, on the Atlantic side, we're talking about 12, even 15 second waves. So those, look at the curve here. This is for deep water, this is for shallower water. The red curve is for deep water. So if the period of 15 seconds, say, we're talking about a 400 meter wavelength of that wave. And therefore the mixing depth is down to half of that, which is about 200 meters down. So we're getting a lot of mixing just from those waves. It depends on the wavelength of the wave, not so much on the amplitude of the wave. So if these waves are over the Eastern Siberian Arctic shelf, where the water depth is only about 650 meters maximum, 50 to 100 meters, in some cases it's shallower, then you can see that the, the uh, wavelength is modified to the short side um, and that will reduce the uh, mixing depth a bit, okay? But the, the point is, is we're mixing the water on the Atlantic side down to uh, 150, 200 meters depth. So this is a typical profile of temperature with depth. So in the tropics, in the summer and winter, is winter's blue line, cold, summer red line, warm. Um, we get stratification in the tropics because the water on the surface is very warm. The water deeper down is cold and this reduces mixing. In the mid latitudes, there's more variation between summer and winter, of course, because we get a much more seasonality with higher latitude. So we get these two type of profiles which meet you know, at a fairly high depth. Now in the Arctic, it's very, very different. So the blue line is in the winter, in the summer, the water is warm. So, so this profile is much more, you know, it doesn't change as much. The temperature is much more constant with depth. Um, cool water near the surface is nearly the same temperature as deep water. So what happens, take the summer case and now we go into fall and we cool the surface water um, we cool the surface water, but the water down below will take time to respond. It's still much warmer. So we're going to start getting a curve like this happening. So this is Greenland Sea, Amundsen Basin water, Canada Basin water. So on the surface, we'll be cooling that water, but you go down a little bit and the water is much warmer. So if we're mixing down to 200 meters with those waves on the Atlantic side, then this so we're, we're, the sea surface temperature is what we're measuring, right? The sea ice comes in to this region, but the waves lift up the sea ice. Don't forget, it's only like a meter thick or something. You have a meter or two meter waves. It's carrying that ice up and down. There's only 15% of the region is ice. 85% can be water. It's detected as it's included in the sea ice extent number. So what we're at, the ice doesn't have a chance. You know, when we get warm, the, the water has warmed so much in these regions that it just, it, as soon as the ice tries to freeze and extend out, it's getting, it's getting um, thrown up and down by the waves. The warm water is brought up from below and uh, it's doing a number on the ice. And you can see the salinity here. Um, it, near the surface, it's lower because of the melt of the ice. As the ice goes out, it melts. So the salinity curve in the three different basins follows this. So this is the gist of it. So this is uh, the National Snow and Ice Data Center. You know, a few days ago, they had they talk about this sluggish ice growth, and it's exactly due to this very effect. The ice growth. Uh, high sea surface temperatures in open water areas limit the ice growth. Now, it wouldn't limit it as much if the water down below was colder, which is normally the case as at lower latitudes. But in the Arctic, it's different because the profile, the water down below is warmer, then this effect can go on for a long period of time. And, um, the wave action, which does the mixing, also has an impact. Also, it's extremely warm in the atmosphere. Um, and you'll see, like this is a new phenomena. I mean, this is, this is uh, you know, look at these curves all coming up. We've never seen this stalling out like this. This stalling out 
is, do, dare I say the word unprecedented, stalling out of the ice in October? I mean, there's so much that's unprecedented with uh, abrupt climate change that, you know, whether, and, and of course, you know, I have to remind people, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. And I, I should have trademarked that phrase because it's my phrase from many years ago. Um, lots of people are using it. Basically, the jet streams form and are, have the behavior that they have because of that temperature difference, the Arctic being much colder than the equator. As the warming greatly increases in the Arctic compared to the equator, that temperature gradient is greatly reduced. The jet streams become much slower, much less zonal, much more meridional, and we're getting increases in the frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events and how it is going to affect humanity. It, it, it's going it, to, it's, it's, it's effect, it will affect all of us, every one of us on this planet. Um, I should point out that the, um, I should point out that this is not just happening in the, um, you know, the ice is super low in the Arctic. People often say, well, the Antarctic ice is being larger. It's been increasing one and a half to, uh, percent per decade and can balance out. Well, sorry, it doesn't work that way. Um, and this year, the Antarctic sea ice is also at record low levels. Let me see if I can bring that up here. So, so this is uh, sea ice extent in Antarctic. Um, this is what's happening, uh, the extent um, in October. So here's where we are, you know, much below record levels. Um, that's all I'm getting with this image. I, I was hoping there was a couple other things here. Uh, interactive. Yeah, this is kind of neat. You can kind of play around with this and, you know, see all the numbers and stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of, and here we go for Antarctic. Okay, here's what I wanted to show. So here's what happened in 2013. Look at this. This was a record high year for sea ice. The blue, the black line is the long-term average. Two standard deviations is the gray area. And look where we are here. You know, now we've dropped to much lower than two standard de deviations in Antarctica. So, you know, why is that happening this year versus a couple years ago? It was record high. I mean, look at the difference here. You know, this is what weather weirding is all about. You jump from one extreme to the other. Anyway, I think I'll uh, conclude here. I mean, Houston, we have a problem. We, we, we have a problem. And so far, humanity is failing miserably, uh, not, even, not even in the game. There's no skin in the, there, there's not even, not even, you know, okay, we're going to renewables and we're putting in carbon, like everything's happening too slow. We have to apply the three-legged bar stool. Otherwise, you know, we're going to be hit with a global food supply problem. Prices will double, triple, quadruple um, you know, when we get simultaneous crop failures due to extreme weather events around the world. So thank you for, for listening. And, uh, you know, I'll try to put out these videos. Uh, and go to my website, paulbeckwith.net. Um, and please consider supporting uh, financially supporting my, my work. I can't, I can't do these videos without, uh, without keeping my, my boss, which my, my spouse, uh, you know, happy with, you know, if I can generate a little bit of income from them. So thanks again for listening. Bye for now.